I'm working it out, y'all. That's clear. There we go. Right again, everyone. As I mentioned, you are watching or tuning in to see you talk with Claire Hubbard, your resource and information show for people getting better with age. And our special guest today, who is no stranger to the community, is my friend, Mr. Philip Bennett. He is with the Alzheimer's Association of Illinois, and he is a very busy man. But if I can, I want to invite all of you, if you have questions or comments, because quite a few people will be watching this on Facebook and on our ClaireHubbard.org website. If you have comments you want to put in our chat, we would love to address those during this time that we're spending today. So, Mr. Philip Bennett, how are you this beautiful day? I am doing well. I'm doing well and looking forward to the weather to change. So, <laughs> it's pretty awesome. <laughs> exactly. That makes both of us. So let me ask you, let's go back to, I mean, we've known each other for over a minimum of seven to 10 years. So let's talk about your career path in working with Alzheimer's and dementia through the Alzheimer's Association of Illinois. And then we'll jump into our target audience for today. All right. Well, well, I started at the um, association and my main focus at that time in uh, 2013 was pretty much to uh, work with uh, people who were calling in. So it was mainly caregivers or people who were calling in to our 24 seven helpline. Mm -hmm. um, and there we would pretty much be able to cater to anyone who was affected by the disease, uh, help to answer questions, help to get certain suspicions out the way and make sure that we get rid of certain myths and things like that. We would get calls where people would say, does aluminum cause Alzheimer's? Um, should we drink out of certain cans or eat out of certain pots and different things like that? Um, so we was there to, you know, make sure that people felt comfortable, but not only that, um, to answer the concerns of the caregivers. And I think that was one of the biggest things and um, most rewarding things about this is to be able to offer resources and to help those that are in need. Um, it's a desperate time. And I, I realized because we offer, we, uh, get phone calls from all over the country um, that when you're in that position of help and desperation, it doesn't matter what your color is. It doesn't matter what your religion is. You just want help and you want someone there to assist you and your family during this time. Absolutely. So let me say, what was the interest of working in this field? I mean, it's, it can be very touchy and very sensitive. And uh, sometimes I, I might say even stressful, but what was the interest that brought you to this this field? Well, my grandmother actually passed away from Alzheimer's mm -hmm. in this, and I believe maybe 2004, so about 2004, 2005. And at that time, we had no knowledge about the Alzheimer's Association. We didn't know what we were doing. Um, so that kind of brought me here. Uh, but just last year in January, my other grandmother passed away from Alzheimer's oh. and we had a better hand on and a better understanding of what to do. Um, but it still isn't easy, you know, so it still isn't an easy task, even though I work there and I feel like I'm an expert or so um, about the information. It's still not an easy task. And the disease, you know, definitely is unique to every person. So absolutely. So let's take let's start from the top. What is the difference between Alzheimer's and dementia? Because that, that's what people yeah. are clearly misunderstood on. Yes, yes. Uh, so I'm explaining two ways. So the first way I want to explain it to let people know what dementia is. So a dementia, dementia is a decline in your cognitive abilities. Okay, so it's a decline in your thinking abilities. 
all right? And there's over 77 types of dementias. Alzheimer's is just one form of dementia, okay? So we, we have so many forms of dementia. Alzheimer's is the most common form that we hear about. Mm -hmm. So, so without, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. You're on my street. That's what I want to clarify on. What mm -hmm. we need to understand is that dementia is the umbrella. Mm -hmm. Then Alzheimer's falls under that. Some people don't know that. So I'm glad you made that clarity, but go ahead. I just wanted to interject. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. And Alzheimer's, what it does, it affects your memory, your thinking, as well as your behavior, but it also affects mobility. It also affects the way you eat. It affects so many other things. Um, yeah, so, so dementia is that umbrella term. And up under that umbrella, you have Alzheimer's. You have uh, vascular dementia and um, uh, Lewy body's dementia and so many more. But Alzheimer's is the most common one that uh, we hear about, um, you know, right right there. And it's, I, I, I would say the second one that we probably hear about most is vascular dementia. Okay. So more recently, we've been uh, looking in the media and can you explain what Bruce Willis has? Okay. I believe Bruce Willis has frontal temporal dementia. Okay. Okay. And I believe that's, and, and that's pretty much where the brain cells in the frontal lobe are affected. Okay. So okay. a lot of times, of course, we know that logical thinking comes from that part of the brain and different things like that. But whenever the uh, someone has Alzheimer's or a form of dementia, the brain actually begins to shrink. Okay, so and deteriorate, and with those brain cells being affected, you know that's a lot of what's what's going on with um, Bruce Willis. Okay, so as I mentioned previous, you know we're coming out of COVID. COVID does still exist. Let's be very clear, everyone. But there was some rise that we heard of after we were opening up that some people, because they were isolated and were not moving and mobile and engaging with other people, that some of them may have developed dementia. So let's say I'm a caregiver, I'm living with my loved one, um, who, as I would say, is getting better with age. We don't call them old. <laughs> but what would you say are some of the symptoms that we can recognize You know, with our family members who think, oh, something a little different about mom or dad or auntie or uncle? What, what, what are some of the symptoms that we should look or consider? That That is a great question. Um, first, I do want to say that, yeah, there was a 17% rise um, wow. in Alzheimer's during COVID. Um, and some of the things that we can look for, um, so we have something that's called the Tim warning signs. Okay. So you can look for behavior changes. You can look for things uh, like, like memory loss that's beginning to affect someone's life. Mm -hmm. um, so that memory loss can be uh, things like, well, you know mom is a good cook and you know that she knows how to make this spaghetti or so just like the back of her hand. So when you begin to see her missing things or if you know uh, and, and not putting certain things in there that, you know, she would know about, then that's one of the signs. Um, if you know that your loved one is great at uh, managing the funds at, at your home or something like that and keeping a record of certain books and things like that. And then all of a sudden they're forgetting. They be begin to forget those simple things, the small things that they used to know, like the back of their hand. You know, then those are some of the signs. Yes. You know, I'll tell you this and you can answer this question for me. My family experienced dementia with my aunt some years ago. But what I will say, and let me know if this is a correlation. She and her husband were together all the time. Mm -hmm. My auntie Floss and my uncle Jerry, they just, they, they was in these streets together, or for luck, a better term, everywhere, hairdresser, mm -hmm. barbershop, you name it. He's going shopping with her, he's, or she's going shopping with him, golf tournament, you name it. So my thing was, when Uncle Jerry passed away, I can promise you less than within 18 months, because my Aunt Florence was just, I won't say she wasn't, she was almost through living for some, from, you know, for lack of a better term. She mm -hmm. shut down. Mm. And we were like, and then shortly thereafter, 
her cognizant skills just were very, very, very minimal. And so we became concerned. And then she did, um, was diagnosed with dementia. And my uncle, my cousin Jerry did a great job of, you know, caring for her mother and so forth. But we had no idea what was going on. And then to walk into a home and see certain items labeled like cups, plates, just words that try to jog their memory. It was really, really, really um, critical. And I, sh I show more empathy than I ever have now, you know, speaking with you and just learning more about it. So how do we engage persons who have dementia and not make them feel, you know, how do we engage them during that the, the trial, the, the process of being diagnosed? That's my question. Hmm. So I, I think there are several ways we can engage them. Uh, the first thing, if I'm thinking about uh, thinking correctly about what you're asking, um, keeping someone engaged with Alzheimer's, you want to try to do things that they used to do or that they love to do. Mm -hmm. um, I always talk about not leaving your loved one um, just sitting in a chair or put them in front of a TV or different things like that. Right. Uh, so get them engaged into something that they may be used to do or that they can still do. Mm -hmm. uh, so, for example, my grandmother used to go hiking and we used to go out to uh, Utica, um, Illinois, and we would hike. Um, but we knew she couldn't go hiking anymore, but she can still go for walks. So that's something that we used to do with her. Oh, beautiful. Um, Another form of engagement that you, that you may be talking about is, well, how do you connect with them or how do you talk with them and things like that? There's several ways that you can do this as well. Um, so, of course, you always want to make sure that you're eye level with the person. Mm -hmm. um, you want to make sure that you're not standing over someone, making them feel like you're there, you know, being dominated or you're being domineering or anything like that. Um, your, your tone should be uh, low and slow. OK, so it should be calm, low and slow. And you can do things with them like color together. You can do things with them like um, read to them, um, hand massages, uh, playing some of the favorite music they used to listen to. For example, my grandmother used to listen to Doc Holliday, you know, um, <laughs> Now we thought we were doing something because we're going to play. We're going to put this jazz on right here and get up yeah. to, to you know she'll she'll love it. And she hated it. She didn't want to hear that. She wanted to hear Doc Holiday. So she had her specific person that she wanted to hear. And whenever it came on, she would try to sing, even though it seemed like she she couldn't find words all the time. But when yeah. this song came on, she was able to find the words. Yes, and yes. It was that repetition there for her, or something that. Mm -hmm. That allowed her to find joy in it. We saw her moving and rocking and different things like that. So yeah. Well, you know, you got, you on my street, and so definitely we're gonna have uh, a great time this summer because I have a, a series that I do. Uh, we do a pop up uh, mini health fair in senior buildings where we do something at twelve o'clock called Midday Music Memories. Nice. And I, I will tell you this. This is so true. Haven't done it many years before COVID. And we went to a senior building. And as soon as we cut the music on, the coordinator said, wow, I'm seeing people come out who never come out. Mm -hmm. So we were in the lobby and we had the music on and I had my DJ and we just going back and engaging them from songs that they grew up with and loved. And so I was so, so, so overwhelmed in, in excitement. And so mm -hmm. this lady, she sat, and when I tell you, Phil, she danced mm -hmm. for hours. And then one song, she sat on her chair, and she just closed her eyes as if she was, you know, dancing and remembering ballet or something. But it was so beautiful. And then I had an occasion where I went to a senior building um, at a church, and they were having this senior, you know, afternoon social. And one lady looked at me, and she said, Oh my goodness. Do you remember when we wore? I love that color yellow. Do you remember when we wore that in high school? And I just knew immediately. And I said, Yes, we had a great time, didn't we? And her husband was right next to her and he said, Thank you. Mm -hmm. To meet her right where she was. So it was just important to 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 be to have the heart of empathy when you're in those situations because a lot of people with dementia are still. Let me say, because having dementia does not make you un unfunctionable 
or you know shut down you know there's still a, a quality of life through dementia yes. and um what are the success stories that you can share um having educated and being a trainer with your title you busy phil i'm so glad you're with us today because we got <laughs> we got we got some congregations and persons who are just watching and listening that need us so what is your position with alzheimer's of illinois and then Let's talk about Purple Sunday, where this concept come, came from and where we're going. OK, so so you, you said where is it, some success stories. Yes. OK, I, I would say the biggest success story is people is, you know, having people or having as not as many people say, I wish I would have known about you guys. Mm -hmm. No, um, because we hear that often. You know, and I, we definitely want to nip that in the bud as, as soon as possible. I wish I would have known about your resources. I wish I would have known about there was about there being a place where I can come or a place where I can call in and speak to someone. Mm -hmm. you know, that's, I guess, where my success lies, knowing that I helped someone, you know, or some family, I'll say. Um, yeah, that's the, the biggest thing. OK. Question number two. My loved one has been diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. And we are literally not comfortable with it. We thought mama just was getting old or daddy was just getting old. Mm -hmm. How how do we have that conversation? You as an expert, how do you have the conversation with the family? That is, that's a big one. You, you have to somehow meet the family where they at. Mm -hmm. and then you have to slowly and gradually Pull them enough so that they can know that it's time to get adjusted to a new normal. Ah, good, good statement. Yes, sir. Um, and and you know, a lot of times um, when I'm out in the community, these are questions that are being brought up. Um, but there's more than just me. You know, I'm I'm so grateful that there's a a, a multitude of us. It's a whole team of us. Mm -hmm. You can call the 24/7 helpline and speak with the master level counselor. And you could tell them, I'm I'm not ready for this. I didn't expect my mom to be doing this. Mm -hmm. I, expected, I expected me and my wife to be traveling now. Yeah. You know, we're we're retired. Well, how how do I deal with this? What are we supposed to do now? Mm. You know, and there's somewhere someone there to help to navigate you through this and to assist you. Wow, that is absolutely beautiful to know. Now we are engaging on something very exciting. When I heard the term, talk to you a little, you a little about it, and just knowing the, the community that we're targeting immediately, mm -hmm. I jumped out of my seat. So now we're talking about Sundays. We want people to go purple for Alzheimer's. Where is this concept coming from? Where did it come from and where are we going with it, Phil? So, so Purple Sunday is a initiative to raise awareness and faith-based uh, communities. And uh, we have been working with a few churches, uh, like the AME churches, and just many churches, really. Um, um, uh, not only here in Chicago, but around the country. Um, and we want to make sure that we put a focus here um, on the state that I'm in. So all around Illinois, we are uh, pretty much talking about how to bring Alzheimer's awareness to the faith based communities you know so that that is the biggest thing and there's so many ways to get involved with this um a lot of people you, you'll hear that you know this is a sunday you know so we got a full agenda on sunday so how do we do that? you know so well, it doesn't it doesn't have to be on a sunday although the title you know is called purple sunday this can be on a thursday after bible class no 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 it's gonna be on sunday and you know why because we mm -hmm. all there Hey, we don't open the door, just give us a little room in the foyer. And we need two minutes, Pastor, sir, or ma'am, to just mm -hmm. make our presentation and we'll take care of the rest on the outside. That's mm -hmm. our request. I'm sorry, Phil. I mean, to, I'm just saying, we're going to yeah. gather on the day when we are all here together and we dressed. And I mm -hmm. am even looking to put an initiative where Senior Talk can be in churches on Sunday. If you need a question or comment, if you have a service, if you need something, we are working to be the, the communication tool for especially faith-based communities who need resources. Yes. They should absolutely. have to go through Google and look around and, you know, referrals are great, but if I've done the research and I've built a team of quality 
services and resources to our community, then we asking faith-based churches to give us an invitation. We can make a senior talk Sunday and let's go purple on all the time, I, whatever. But we got, we need days that we are gathered together where we all paying attention anyway. Yes. So, as I said, we need two minutes and then we can meet you can meet us in the foyer. How about that? Yes, ma'am. Or yes, if you're a church or an organization that is listening and you will allow us to put it, this our flyer in your bulletin, we will welcome that opportunity too. Absolutely. All right. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Phil. So what, well, what you've already started some communication in churches. So what has been the response and what do we need to be prepared to receive when you come in? Wow. Um that that so the, the response, I'm gonna want to say that really quick. That mm -hmm. has the response has been great and wide because you find that wow, so many people are affected, and a lot of times uh, many people weren't saying anything. Mm -hmm. So That's now cool. you're like, okay, oh, this is what's happening, you know. So now more things are are going on. Um, as far as being prepared, uh, uh, when I come in, uh, you you're going to receive information about Alzheimer's. You're going to uh, receive resources, brochures, and then you're going to understand that you know all of this is free. You know, so everything that we're offering is free. OK, so these resources and everything, you, you're you not paying for anything. Mm. You know, now, so, is there more? Is there one ethnicity of people that are more open to receiving information? You know, sometimes I'm gonna be honest, us of color, we just resist. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, it, you know and, yep. So African-Americans are two times more likely to develop it. Yes, sir. We are two times more likely to develop Alzheimer's, and you know that's because of a, a host of things um, that I, I really don't have time to get into right now. But I feel that um, sometimes we we can be the most quietest about it as well, you know, especially when you you come from a family where you're like, you know, our business stay in our home, yeah, um, things like that, or or you see something you like, well, that's just a crazy Uncle Joe. We're gonna put him over there in the back room or something mm -hmm. like that. You know, so we want to stray away from that and definitely, you know, allow people to to get rid of that stigma and being ashamed to talk about it and and want to just come out more and talk about it because this opens up more people to to come and talk about it and for more people to receive resources. Absolutely. And one of the key things that I'm really excited about is, you know, the resources now are so far broader than in previous years. We've grown Mm -hmm. And there are some ways and there are medicines that can, you know, help decrease or, you know, I mean, I'm not going to get into all that, but there's so many ways of now to have an enriched and enhanced quality of life through Alzheimer's and dementia. So I don't want, I just want to make that announcement. You know, there's studies being done. And if you're watching, check up on studies and things like that, but use the resources from a trusted source. And that will be seeing you talk with Claire Hubbard and the Alzheimer's Association of Illinois with my friend, Phil Bennett. For those who are tuning in and listening, you can do yourself a favor by calling him at 773-563-2512 or email pbennett at alz.org. This will be also on uh, clairehubbard.org. It's streaming now on our YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, all those pages. And we want everyone to please don't be um, embarrassed. Don't be prideful when there's resources for our community and for you. And if you're a caregiver, you're definitely more than welcome to call because caring for the loved one through that process is no easy task. And so I really like that you mentioned the, um, the, the call number where people can say, I ain't ready. And what we going to do? So I love that. That's very important. So we got a few more minutes, Phil. Um, we're just kicking this program off, Go Purple uh, for Alzheimer's on Sundays. Um, what is your ideal goal of churches or communities that you would like to reach, let's say, within the next couple of months or throughout this year? I would love to reach the African-American community because we are most affected by it. Um, because I have seen it firsthand with my grandparents um, and because I know that we don't talk about it enough um, because I've seen my mom be a caregiver mm -hmm. and not have resources um, because I, I, I trust in what we're doing. You know, I trust in that there is help available. And I think a lot of times uh, not knowing, you know, um, is, is one of our, 
biggest things that holds us back. You know, yeah. so when the information is there and the resources are there. So now, you know, you know, so, you know, it's like, what can you do now? You know, now, you know, that it's here. You just got to grab the, you know, you got to grab a hold to this and, and start driving. So how, just, just because we got a few minutes, how was your, um, how was your reaction? How was your relationship with your mom knowing that you work in this, uh, this field? Mm -hmm. How were you impactful to your family to help them see the process and make it a little bit um, less threatening or more easier to deal with the situation that your grandmother was going through? How did you help your family with your knowledge? Yeah. yeah. So the biggest thing I wanted to do was remind my mom that you are not the only one that have to take on this task. Mm -hmm. so there, it's, it's a lot of us here. Everyone here needs to be involved. You know, we find a lot of times that the caregiver ends up passing away before they taking before the person they're taking care of, you yes. know, because of all of the stress and everything. So spreading out that that task of helping, you know, my grandmother and things like that was one of the biggest things we could have done. Wow. Well, I'm excited. So what we want. So what's what does the presentation look like at the church? Are we um, what happens? when we go purple on Sundays at churches, what are you doing to, you know, for pastor offices an opportunity, what, what, what time frame or what are your key points that you're mentioning during that time? Gotcha. So, so my, my main thing is if we, if you can give us a table somewhere after service, then that would be efficient enough. Mm -hmm. if open to allowing us to maybe have 10 minutes or so to speak about education, um, to talk about the 10 warning signs, what to look out for, that would be even more helpful. But allowing us in the door, that is, you know, beneficial enough. I know that's right. So we have a closing statement. What is your closing statement? You've been great. You know, Phil, I'm so glad we hooked up because your knowledge and ease and, you know, it's more, um, it makes people maybe more open to consider being open to talking about this this disease. I mean, dementia is, I didn't know there were so many forms of Alzheimer's. Never knew that. And there's several ways, but there's help. There is help. And so Philip is representing the Alzheimer's Association of Illinois. If you would like to reach him, you can call him at 773-563-2512. And what would be your closing remarks today? You've been awesome, Phil. Thank you so much. And look forward to having you coming back and getting these invitations rolling so we can hit this church market and get Sundays go purple for Alzheimer's. What is your closing remark at this time? My closing remarks would be that you are not alone. And uh, feel free to call the 24-7 helpline at 1-800-272-3900. All right, everyone. So we have enjoyed a phenomenal broadcast. Thank you so much, Phil, for your time today. And um, for if you have any questions or comments for what you've heard or seen today, we invite you to do yourself a favor, and that is to go to Senior Talk with Claire Hubbard on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. We're going to go purple for Alzheimer's. Invite us to your block club, your church picnic, you name it. We will come. We may even go to a step of set. Who knows? But yes. we need invitations because dementia, what I am learning to feel is it doesn't discriminate. Yes. I've been seeing people as young as 37. Mm. So it doesn't discriminate. So we all need to become knowledgeable. Well, thank you again, Phil. You've been awesome. And for those who are tuning in and listening, if you want more information, please go to clairehubbard.org. On our homepage, you'll see this broadcast again, as well as the information on if your church congregation or social club, wherever you gather, we would like for you to go purple for Alzheimer's. God bless you all. Thank you for making us a part of your day. And we will see you next time for Senior Talk with Clara Hubbard. Everyone take care.